Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video. So we're going to take a look at uh, thermostat and water pump change on uh, my X-Type, my 3 litre. So I had a little bit of an issue where it started overheating not that long ago. I keep an eye on the gauge so I know where normal is, it's right there. And I noticed there was a collapsed coolant hose. So this is the, the main coolant hose out of the, uh, the cylinder head, uh, which actually leads into the heater matrix pipe work. And that collapsed, which was kind of interesting, suggested that there was a vacuum. That's what it should look like, you can see there. The, uh, the, the lower left side beneath that T, um, it's nicely inflated. So I rerouted it just in case that was causing an issue, but um, I also decided to take a bit of a closer look at what could have been causing it. So if we look again, that's the hose in question that was collapsing. So we need to identify first why it was collapsing, why it was causing a bit of overheating. You can see there, there's the water pump down there running. It's had a coolant leak in the past, but it's been remedied. So. We're going to do a little bit of changing of, of components here, just a fault find, um, basically what's gone wrong. You can see that, uh, that the water pump itself, although it's not leaking at the moment, it has potentially done in the past. Uh, there's some pretty rusted looking bolts there. Uh, but a lot of the pipe work is new, so that T um, is brand new. Um, the pipe work there to the heater matrix is not new, that is original, I never changed that. Uh, and when I say new, the, uh, the, the pipe work that I have replaced was sort of over two and a half years ago. So it's done 6,000 miles, 8,000 miles. Uh, I'm not going to go about changing all of that right now. So I need to work out what has caused the, the issue that I'm seeing. Now, obviously the vehicle began overheating first, I then found that collapsed pipe. The pipe may well have collapsed as the vehicle was cooling down, so that indicates there might be a problem with the cap. I have tested the water pump, the water pump runs fine. The way that I did this was I disconnected that hose there. That's the return to the, uh, the, the top of that coolant tank. Run the vehicle and you can see that it, uh, it pops up a load of, a load of coolant. Um, so it's running quite well and when you rev it, then actually the, the amount of coolant that comes out increases. As a single person doing the test, I can't really replicate that. Now the coolant comes out, goes through there, goes through the water pump, out through the block, um, out the other side, comes back through it's got a fairly convoluted path and there are actually two main uh, pipes that one feeds down to the the lower part of the radiator so it's effectively a return the the top part goes out from the um, uh, from from the thermostat so the, the top radiator inlet is out from the thermostat it, it kind of takes a little bit of getting used to when you have a look at it with the front off the car and with the radiator out you can actually see a little bit more of the uh, uh, of the coolant passageway through the engine but it's worthwhile getting to grips with and at least understanding in a little bit of detail before you start taking stuff apart if you have to. So that cap is the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to actually replace it. I suspect that it's allowing excess pressure out, but then are not allowing the system to equilibrate and as such causing that, uh, that pipe to actually collapse uh, when it cools down. Now if you heard that, that was the sound of uh, air entering the system because I'd opened the cap. So that indicates to me that the valve on there is actually broken or malfunctioning in some way. Uh, it's allowing excess pressure to escape but not to come back in. So we're going to replace that cap as a precautionary measure but I do suspect that something else in the system was causing the, uh, the engine to begin overheating. So we are going to replace the thermostat and the uh, the water pump. Now I do suspect the thermostat because I could feel that the top radiator hose wasn't getting as warm as I suspected. However, the water pump is, uh, if not original, certainly very old uh, and as a result I'm going to replace that because I'm having to lose some of the system's uh, coolant anyway. So remove the battery terminal screws, lift the battery terminals off. Uh, if you want to you can connect those together to help clear any codes that are long term stored and then uh, undo the bolts that are holding the clamp on uh, which secure the battery. So I believe they're all 10 millimeter from recollection and uh, you might need a deeper socket than uh, your standard set in order to get to them as some, sometimes they seat quite low down and it'll be a bit of a mission with a spanner. The top of your battery is probably a little bit tidier than mine. I've got some control boxes in there for lighting. But once you've removed the nuts, obviously keep them somewhere safe. I use a magnetic tin catch for it. Uh, you, can, uh, you can then lift out the battery, lift out that uh, clamp. The clamp only fits one way, so just make sure that you've made a note of that. And after uh, that's happened, you can hoist the battery out. 
important word of warning, do not put your battery in your boot and then close it because the boot is only openable via the key fob. Uh, you obviously need a battery connected in order for that to work. So yeah, don't put it in your boot. And after that, just remove the uh, battery box. So uh, we're going to work downstream, um, obviously first off uh, is the water pump, we're going to have to remove the belt and there's the tensioner. Uh, we're also going to have to remove that pulley in order to get to all the bolts that are holding the water pump in place, but first things first, let's crank that pulley back so that we can uh, remove the belt. Now the belt itself is actually quite new on mine, I replaced it a couple of years ago, uh, as well as the tensioner, so this isn't going to be anything too tricky, so it gives you a good indication of what works. And here's a, an idea of how to do it. So using a 15 millimeter, I'm using a crank ring end or cranked ring end spanner. Um, that works quite well. It gives you a bit of space to work and you can see me just lift the pressure off the, uh, the tensioner and off comes the belt, nice and simple. And at this point you can inspect the belt. You can decide whether or not you want to replace it. I'm not going to replace it because mine is, is as I say, a couple of years old. Um, you can still see the text is there. It's quite nice and visible. It's a decent quality belt, so I'm not going to replace it. So first things first, uh, we're going to remove the bolts that hold the pulley in place. So it's only three bolts. Again, undo them carefully, but uh, out they come. They're fairly short and they're all the same length, which is useful. And with that, it reveals all of the bolts holding in place the water pump. So these are the ones that we're going to have to remove uh, in order to get the old unit out. So with your new water pump, you should have a gasket. Uh, the gasket is often supplied separately. I bought mine from British Parts, but it should match that water pump nicely. Uh, I'm just gonna eyeball that up, make sure it's the right one, but yeah, you can see that's going to be the right sort of fit. Um, yeah, this one is still a plastic impeller by the looks of things, unless it's some sort of composite. Um, but yeah, need to now make sure that when we remove the, uh, the bolts, that we store them correctly so that we know which one goes in which location because they are all different lengths. So this is something that, uh, that I do quite frequently. I use the box that the part came in. Uh, I draw a, uh, a version of it and I then punch holes where the bolts are supposed to go and as I remove the bolts I put them in the location um, that they came out of but just on the, the cutout picture. Genuinely genuinely be really careful with these screws because the, it's almost like they're made of cheese. The, uh, the stuff that was built by Ford Jaguar you know 20 odd years ago um, early 2000s the quality of the screws holding stuff and bolts holding stuff together it just wasn't that great so just be concerned as you remove them be gentle be careful especially if it's a cold engine where everything has contracted so you see that's come out of the uh, that top right one we're just going to pop it in the same position and we'll carry on working our way around Okay, so we're approaching the point in time where we can remove the old water pump. You're going to lose some coolant there. Um, the total that comes out is somewhere around five, 600 milliliters. It's nothing serious. Uh, obviously, you've got anything that's coming out of the header tank as well that's, uh, that's possibly draining through the, uh, the cylinder head, but uh, not, a, not a great deal is going to come through. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Put a drip tray under the car. Um, just between the gearbox and the uh, the engine, uh, it'll catch the majority of it. And that's what I've done here. And now it's just a case of using a Stanley blade or a, a scalpel blade, but basically a flat one, a flat blade, uh, just to take off any of the old gasket material that's still stuck to the uh, the surface of the water pump housing. Uh, 
I've actually spotted that there is some silicon sealant or RTV there, so that, uh, that's going to need a little bit more attention with the blade just to make sure that we're getting all of it off. Uh, I will probably be using some RTV as well just to hold the gasket in place while we're refitting. It's a, an additional precaution, um, but it works quite well, I found, with water pump replacements in general. Okay, so having dried off the, uh, the water pump housing sufficiently, uh, I'm just going to run a little bead of RTV and it will be an exceptionally small bead of RTV because you, you don't want any more than is absolutely necessary on this and that RTV will simply uh, be used to hold the gasket in place while I fit the, uh, the water pump. You can do it other ways, that's fine, but the RTV I found in, in most cases actually just helps the seal a little bit. Um, provided you don't use too much of it, which I'm definitely not going to do. So I will point out that the RTV is a superfluous step, it's just my own personal preference, it's, it's how I do things, that's fine. Um, taking a little bit of the coolant that has, uh, that has continued to appear, and it, it will continue to do so anyway throughout the, the course of the job, uh, and then um, I will just stick the gasket uh, onto the RTV so that it gets held. You can see the thin bead that, uh, that I've placed on there just to hold the gasket in place. And I'm now going to line up the new gasket. Uh, because I've got the RTV open I'm going to put a thin bead on the other side as well and uh, when the water pump compresses against it I'm going to have the benefit of both the, the standard gasket and the RTV. Uh, it, it is definitely superfluous on this uh, on this application but it comes down to your own personal choice on whether or not you intend to replace the water pump anytime soon or uh, how much of a chance you want to uh, run for a leak but yeah it will come down to your own personal preference I prefer the the RTV on both sides it just holds the the water pump in place a little bit nicer uh, just during application and if the bead is very very thin as mine is it's not going to interfere at all with the gasket's integrity so now it's just a case of making sure that all the bolts go back in the right order and uh, I prefer to grease them on the way in so you know they'll be a little bit less difficult for the next person to remove. Uh, that next person may well be me so see what happens. Uh, anyway in they go, make sure that they're in the right order and as I say well greased. A really important point of note here is that you can put the bolts in in any order but when it comes to tightening them you must tighten them across from each other so that means if you do the top one then do the bottom one next uh, and that's really to ensure that you've got equal pressure across the water pump housing itself uh, it's just going to reduce the chances of you ever experiencing a leak from the gasket there. And there's the marker that I put on the pulley just to uh, direct us as to which way is up. That can now be refitted. We haven't rotated anything there, so it just bolts straight back up with the arrow pointing up. And away we go, three bolts in. You don't need to worry about doing these up in any particular order. Um, I did grease them, although they came out quite easy, so I don't think you'll have any trouble with these at all. torque on these bolts is going to be fairly low, uh, don't worry too much about it, do them up uh, tight using a quarter inch drive system, something like that, don't hang off it like a gorilla. Uh, there's three of them on there and none of them are in the centre so it's not exactly as if it's going to unspin itself. Fitting the belt is uh, really easy, simply pass it over the uh, water pump and over the main pulley or over the tensioner, whichever really works best for you. I've put it over the tensioner and over the main pulley just push the tensioner back and then feed it over the rest. It's, uh, it's a very simple belt to run. I'll give it a quick sort of push and move about just to make sure it doesn't jump, but other than that, good to go. Now that small item there with the bolts in it is the thermostat. It's just off that rubber pipe that's on the metal pipe there, uh, just in front of the front catalytic converter. It's very very tight in there it's going to be a bit of a rigmarole getting it out but we're going to try and work our way through and see how easy it is to bring it out so i've removed the radiator top hose and i'm just undoing the clips uh, for the the pipe work that leads 
out of the thermostat back into the block uh, there is going to be some coolant trapped in there so it's uh, up to you really whether you want to fight for space under the car with a, uh, a bucket or catch pot or something like that but uh, yeah there's not much room to work in once you've removed the hose then it gives you a little bit more access to the bolts the three bolts which are eight millimeter uh, around the outside just holding the thermostat into the thermostat body Frustratingly in this case my catch pot was just a little bit too far to the right and unfortunately it missed a lot of the coolant that came out because it sort of came out as a, a bit of a fountain. Um, but yeah if you use a drip tray then you won't have the same issue that I've just had there. And here's our thermostat which is uh, less than two and a half years old. And I'm pretty sure it's failed so here's the new one that's going to go in. Uh, pretty sure it's going to solve the problem. Out of interest, just uh, for you guys, it's got 82C on it, so obviously opens at 82 centigrade. Now I'm not going to lie, this refitting of the thermostat is an absolute ache. It only goes in in one direction, uh, and I'll give you a little bit more of a hint on that in a minute from the top. But the tightness, the lack of space here is just unreal because that metal pipe there has to be metal because it goes around the cat. It contacts that frame spar at the front that uh, adds a bit of uh, solidness to the X-type uh, subframe at the front. And because that's metal it can't move down too far, it's, uh, it goes into the block there the other side of the cat. So as a result you've got very little movement uh, of that particular pipe. And consequently you're going to find it quite difficult to get the rubber pipe back over the bottom of that thermostat. So I've managed to get it in there and I'm just going to give you a, a little bit of guidance there on the, the correct orientation. So that's the way it needs to go with those two arms that hold the spring cap, if you like, um, into position. So those arms need to be oriented in that fashion for it to bolt up. If they're not in that uh, orientation it's not going to bolt in and you're going to be able to rotate it. If you do attempt to rotate it once it's fitted, there is a chance that you can actually knock that spring cap off and it'll, it'll end up pinging the thermostat internals all over the place. So having got it all together, got the bottom hose back onto the, uh, the thermostat lower, uh, I'm now doing the three 8mm screws back into the, uh, the thermostat housing to hold it all together. Once that's done, we're about ready to fill it with coolant. Now my tightening torque on these is going to be pretty damn tight if I'm honest. I'm, uh, I'm not going to take any chances with this. I really don't want it to leak and I don't want it to come apart again. I haven't put anything more than just a natural lubricant on the, uh, on the seal as it sat in so uh, there's, there's no RTV or anything like that in there. And once they're done up tight on the ratchet then I'll just nip them up a little bit more just to make sure that they stay seated. Once you've done those uh, bolts up, then uh, it's about time to get uh, friendly with those pliers again and uh, get the hose clamp up onto that lower mount of the thermostat body. And then once you've recomposed yourself, uh, get the lower uh, hose clamp on as well which uh, connects the thermostat outlet rubber pipe onto that metal pipe that runs around the catalytic converter at the front. And because I don't enjoy being on my back for any longer than I have to, uh, but I don't want to repeat this job, I'm going to just make sure that those bolts are fully tightened up on the thermostat housing and give them a little bit more of an angle if I can.
If like me you disconnected your radiator top hose, now is a brilliant time for you to reconnect that. And you can start filling her up with coolant. Don't be an animal, use a funnel. Now I'm using a, a Manol G12 Plus, it's a red coolant, it's uh, a ready mixed one that uh, you can pick up from most motor factors or even eBay, Amazon. Um, I've not had any issues with it, it's pretty good, it's also ready mixed so you don't have to worry about getting deionized water or anything like that, distilled water. Um, it's fairly cost effective as well and it does match the Ford specification required for this particular engine. So having replaced the uh, water pump and the thermostat, uh, I had to replace somewhere around 4.8 litres of uh, coolant, which is almost half of the total capacity, but obviously since we've not touched the heater matrix uh, and there's still a fair amount of water in the block, uh, we hadn't taken off the, the lower hose, so there was still a fair amount in there. Uh, it's not surprising that there's still a, a reasonable amount of coolant in there. The, the radiator also has held a fair amount Go ahead and fill her up to max marker and uh, you might need to give a few of the radiator hoses a squeeze just to get the fluid moving. Right, so I'm letting a few of the excess air bubbles uh, come out of the system. I haven't seen any more in the, the past few minutes having filled it. So just refitted the battery, uh, done the terminals up. I'm not going to bore you with how that's uh, how that's done, you already know that if you got this far. Uh, just as air is popping out from the, the system as it's bleeding itself, I'm just adding a little bit more coolant just up to the max marker. Uh, checking routinely really, make sure that I don't overfill it. So we're now at a point where it's time to start the car, check for any full leaks and uh, see that she runs well. no leaks there you'd know instantly if there was a problem from the installation so that gives me a great degree of confidence in this work uh, I will let it run for a little bit longer just make sure that it gets up to temperature check that the fan kicks in uh, but yeah ultimately this has been a, a very successful repair it's taken me a little longer than expected but uh, overall been quite happy with it the car's jacked up at the front so obviously the coolant level is not going to be exactly correct I'll check it again when it's on the level so if you made it this far into the video, that's uh, 23 and a half minutes. Big congratulations to you, well done. Uh, obviously if you fast forwarded this far, you missed the best bits. Um, yeah, feel free to engage in the, in the comments if there's something that uh, you would have done differently. But otherwise, I hope this gives you the confidence to work on your own car. Keep it on the road. Uh, the X-Types do need a little bit of fettling here and there. So hopefully this has given you uh, all the tools that you need in order to do the job. Best of luck to you.